Hello and welcome friends. In this particular module, I wish to discuss about the permanent adjustments of the pillar. I would like to recall a few of the concepts that have been discussed in model 2B that is vertical distance measurement in land survey. In this particular presentation, we will discuss about the desired relationship among the fundamental axis of the pillable, condition, object, necessity, test, and adjustment that we do with the fundamental axis. And in order to understand the concept better, we will solve two problems based on permanent adjustments. As you learn the content, I wish you to define permanent adjustments as well as state the essentiality of the same. To carry out the test to assess desired relationship among the fundamental axis of the dumpy level. As well as you will be able to carry out permanent adjustment for the dumpy level. As discussed previously, when we are dealing with the construction aspect of dumpy level, you know that there are three basic axes which could be treated as fundamental lines for any leveling equipment such as vertical axis of the equipment about which the equipment rotate in horizontal plane, axis of level tube that is when we level the equipment and when we bring the bubble at the center of its run, axis tangential to that particular position of the bubble will be nothing but axis of level tube as well as line of sight which is essentially line joining the intersection of the vertical hair and horizontal hair of the diaphragm and the optical center of the objective glass. In properly adjusted equipment, the desired relationship would be axis of the level tube should be perpendicular to the vertical axis. Horizontal hair should lie in a plane perpendicular to the vertical axis. The line of sight should be parallel to axis of level, level tube. In addition, with the constructional aspects, the axis of telescope and the line of sight should coincide with each other. In order to assess the permanent adjustment, we assess this particular desired relationship among these particular fundamental lines. As one does these particular permanent adjustments, the equipment will be in perfect condition for considerable long time. When we take out the equipment, in order to conduct any leveling exercise, we must first of all understand whether the given equipment is in permanent adjustment or not. So for that, as discussed previously, firstly we carry out the temporary adjustment, that is we level the equipment, we focus the eyepiece, we focus the object glass after setting the equipment. So as we do this temporary adjustment, we wish to see the bubble is remaining at the center of its run. If it is happening, as well as if the equipment is getting properly focused, if there is no parallax in readings, we do say that the equipment is in permanent adjustment. Usually, when the equipment 
is procured from any manufacturer, it is in perfect adjustment. But because of its continuous usage, because of the wear and tear, because of certain say loose fitting as well as because of certain mishandling, the equipment may go, may go out of permanent adjustments and hence it requires periodic check. Whenever we find that there is something wrong with the fundamental relationship, the crosshair as well as level tube is to be adjusted to re-establish the desired relationship. It is always better to check the equipment prior to any leveling assignment for its permanent adjustment as well as we have to ensure the perfection with the design relationship especially about the precise and accurate leveling works. So the first condition that we wish to have is axis of level tube should be perpendicular to the vertical axis. The basic objective is to ensure the position of the bubble in the middle of its ramp for all the position of the telescope when the instrument is leveled. So this is necessary because the bubble should be remaining at the center while taking any reading. This particular adjustment is more because of the convenience to save the time of leveling the equipment prior to taking every reading. It is also necessary to have the reference line for the adjustment in a level as a vertical line which remains in the fixed direction as direction of gravity. So, as we set the equipment on its tripod on the firm ground, we carry out the leveling of the equipment, that is, we bring the bubble at the center of its run by making use of leveling screws. Now, say if the initial position is as shown in this figure, that is, the eyepiece is on the right whereas objective is on the left. When we move the equipment end to end, the position of the bubble should remain as it is. So here if it is happening, we do say that axis of level tube is perpendicular to the vertical axis. Here if it is not happening, that means the vertical axis of the equipment is not coinciding the true vertical axis given by direction of gravity. Hence, the axis of bubble tube will be making some inclination with respect to the axis of bubble tube here shown as horizontal line. So, as you see in this particular initial position, the inclination of the vertical axis of the equipment with the true vertical, that is nothing but the direction of the gravity, is alpha. Now, as we turn the equipment end to end through 180 degrees, now this particular vertical axis of the equipment will be on the right of the true vertical and thus it will be making another angle alpha. So, as we turn this particular equipment or telescope through 180 degrees, because of principle of the reversion, if the error involved is alpha, it gets involved as twice of alpha. The same concept can be seen in form of axis here. So, after leveling the equipment, we have made this particular line of sight. Hence, axis of 
global tube horizontal. It is perpendicular to this particular truly vertical axis of the equipment. But as you see here, the vertical axis of the equipment is not truly vertical, but it is making inclination of alpha. Hence, the axis of bubble tube is not making angle of 90 degrees with the vertical direction, but in reality, it is making inclination of 90 degrees minus alpha. As we turn the equipment through 180 degrees, here, as we discussed about this particular principle of reversion, this will be moving through to alpha and accordingly here in the second position it will be showing the axis of level tube as shown here. Hence, we want to bring back this particular second axis as seen here at the middle of this particular two alpha angular position so as to have it perpendicular to the axis of equipment. Now, as we further remove this alpha, it will be attaining the horizontal line and hence it will be perpendicular to the vertical axis of the equipment which is now direction of gravity. So, in order to adjust this particular equipment for making this particular axis of level tube horizontal, let's determine the total movement of the bubble after rotating the telescope end to end. Say, here the way I have shown, the bubble is moved through this number of dimensions. Now, you know already that this is the telescope. This is longitudinal level tube. This is cross level tube. The longitudinal level tube is provided with capstan headed screws at one end and other end it is fixed. So, as we loosen these particular capstan headed screws and subsequently we turn down or we turn up this particular longitudinal level tube, the desired position of the tube can be had. So say here, if this particular bubble is moved through say 6 division, by making use of capstan headed screws, according to the requirement, we make this particular longitudinal level tube raised up by 3 divisions or pressed down by 3 divisions by making use of these particular capstan headed screws. Some of the old equipment are spring loaded. Here it is provided with single capstan headed screw. So we need not use the two capstan headed screws simultaneously in order to bring the position of the bubble at the center. So simply as we turn this in the clockwise manner or anti-clockwise manner accordingly this particular axis of bubble tube can be raised or it can be lowered according to our requirement. As we have this particular bubble brought for this particular instant now the line of sight can be defined with respect to the axis of bubble tube as horizontal. But as we turn the telescope, now the bubble will be again moving to the effect of the inclinity inward. Hence, we wish to have the remaining three divisions adjusted by making use of these leveling screws. So, making half of the divisions adjusted through capstan headed screws and making remaining half of the divisions by making use of set of leveling screws will help us to establish the position of the bubble at its center. 
Now, as we bring the bubble at the center by making use of these particular capstan heated screws and the leveling screws, we can reassess the position of the bubble by turning the equipment through 180 degrees. Here, if the bubble is not remaining at the center, again, the total number of the divisions will be counted and this particular adjustment will be repeated. As discussed previously, as we make use of this particular capstan heated screws and as we bring the bubble at this particular center, we'll be making this particular axis of bubble tube horizontal, but not necessarily the axis of level tube horizontal. And that's why here we have to make use of the leveling screws to maintain the horizontality of the telescope for all the directions. Otherwise, for each of the readings, we have to make the telescope horizontal by making use of level tube. That's why it is said earlier that this particular adjustment is for convenience. Now, the second adjustment is to make this particular horizontal cross hair in a plane perpendicular to the vertical axis. As we look through the eyepiece, we get this kind of field of vision in which there is a horizontal hair, vertical hair, which is engraved on this particular circular piece of the dark track. As you know about the constructional aspect, this particular piece of the diaphragm is held through this particular washer arrangement by making use of four adjusting screws. So because of some or other reason, because of its usage, if any of the screw is disturbed here, this particular diaphragm could have been turned in the leftward direction or the rightward direction and hence this particular horizontal hair may not be exactly horizontal. As we have this particular axis of bubble tube made perpendicular to the vertical axis of the equipment and as we look through the eyepiece, this horizontal hair should be truly horizontal because we make use of this particular horizontal hair in order to take the staff reading. As well as the surveyor may take reference of this particular vertical hair in order to check the verticality of the staff when it is held to take the reading. Hence, we have to make the horizontal hair to lie in a plane perpendicular to the vertical axis. In order to check whether this particular horizontal hair is truly horizontal, we can have a certain mark placed on certain vertical surface. Here, as you see, at this particular point, we can have certain mark at the same height as that of the height of this particular horizontal hair. Now, as we turn the equipment slowly by making use of tangential screw, the mark that we have provided on the vertical surface should flow along this particular horizontal hair. If it is so, we can say that this particular horizontal hair is truly horizontal and hence we can take the reading by making use of this reference. However, if the mark moves in this particular dotted manner, that means here this particular line is no more horizontal, but it is inclined the way it is shown here in this particular figure. As you see, this particular horizontal hair position is on the lower side as compared to the required horizontal, we have to lift it up or just we have to move this particular curve, we have to rotate this particular diaphragm in clockwise direction. In order to do so, we can consider the 
right half of this particular diaphragm and we can have this particular horizontal hair turn in the lower face so as to have this hair lifted up. In order to do so, here we can make use of two adjacent screws so that here this particular diaphragm will be rotated to the required extent and accordingly as we have this horizontal we can clamp that. So after adjusting again whatever the test that we have performed here the same should be repeated and accordingly this particular horizontal hair could be made horizontal. Third thing is we wish to have the line of sight placed parallel to axis of moment. The objective is to set the line of collimation parallel to the bubble axis so that whenever the bubble is centered, the line of collimation should become exactly horizontal. As we know, whole leveling exercise is related with the horizontal plane. We wish to have the axis of telescope line of sight as tangential to the leveled surface and hence in the form of horizontal line. If there is an inclinity of the line of sight, we won't be able to take the readings with respect to the horizontal plane. Hence, we have to ensure that whenever that particular bubble is at the center of its run, the line of sight is horizontal, that is, it is perpendicular to the direction of the gravity. We can test this with reference to this particular diagram. So, let's say there are two stations A and B plus say 60 to 90 meter apart. So, we can place the equipment exactly at the center of this particular line AB and accordingly we can take the reading as A and B. As discussed previously, as we center the equipment here, line OA and line OB are balanced and hence, even if there is an inclinity of the length of this particular site, the error involved will be with same magnitude and hence, simply by determining the difference in between small a and small b read as stop reading respectively at a and b, we can work out the true difference in elevation that is h. Now, the equipment can be moved away from any of the station in line of a b and accordingly here we can take the reading as C and D on A and B respectively. Now as we determine this particular difference in C and D, it should be same as that of true difference in elevation H that is worked out by determining the difference in A and B. If this difference in A and B is same as that of difference in C and D, the equipment is in permanent adjustment. If that particular difference does not tally, that means we have to make certain adjustment in order to make the line of sight parallel to axis of bubble tube. So in order to do so, as the equipment setup is shown, let's have the readings read as A and B. As shown in figure, equipment is placed exactly at the center of this particular stretch AB. Hence, 
OA and OB are equal. Station A is placed at lower level as compared to station B. We wish to have the length of sight horizontal, but it is no more horizontal, but it is inclined through some inclination. And we have assumed here that inclination is upward, hence treated as positive. As we discussed about the principle of balancing of the line of sights, reading grade as A and the reading grade as B will give us true difference in elevation H. Here it is shown to be H is equal to A minus B. Now, here the equipment is placed nearer to station A by some distance T1. As we carry out the temporary adjustment and as we take the reading, here we get this particular reading as A1 on A and B1 as B. As we have assumed that the line of sight is inclined upward, with respect to horizontal, error involved till this A1 will be EA at A, whereas error involved at station B will be EV. Here, as we consider this particular dotted line, the vertical ordinate till B1 will be nothing but EV minus EA. Here, as we determine the apparent difference as A1 minus B1, this H should tally with H dash. If so, there is no requirement of adjustment. If they are not equal, adjustment are required. So, by making use of similar triangles, this EA by D1 should be equal to EB by D plus D1 should be equal to EB minus EA over capital T. As such, this should be equal to error E by capital T. So, here the error involved is H minus H dash which is A minus B minus into bracket A1 minus B1. This error occurs over this particular distance T. As discussed previously, we have assumed that line of sight incline upward. Hence, error is positive. Hence, the error in distance D plus D1 is EB. The way we discussed here, EB should be equal to E into bracket D plus D1 bracket complete by capital T. By making use of this correction at station B, we can work out the correct stop reading at station B when the equipment is placed as shown in the second setup. We should be equal to B1 minus EB. Hence, now we have the quantity of EB as well as the true reading required at station B when the line of sight is horizontal. Here we can make use of capstan headed screws of the diaphragm as shown in the previous figure. Now here we wish to have this particular diaphragm moved in the vertical plane in the downward manner in order to make the line of sight horizontal. If the line of sight is inclined in the downward manner, we have to shift this particular horizontal air in the upward direction in order to make the line of sight horizontal. So, here the capstan headed screws at the top and bottom of the diaphragm is loosened. The ring is moved vertically, which is nothing but the movement of the diaphragm so that line of sight will be 
intersecting the calculated stop reading at station P as in step 3. Now, as we do so, the line of sight should be horizontal. So, in order to check the equipment, we can take the reading on station A. It should be equal to A1 minus EA. So, here this EA can also be quantified. So, EA is given by E into D1 by capital T. So, if the stop reading is not A1 minus EA, we have to repeat the step 4 till this particular step 5 is satisfied. Also, as we determine the corrected stop readings at station A as well as B in the second setup, their difference can be checked with the true difference in elevation which is worked out with the first setup of the equipment. This method is called as two peg method. Now as we discussed, we have made assumption of this particular A to be placed at lower level. We have assumed the line of sight is inclined upward. There could be reverse of the case. So here the line of sight could be inclined downward or A could have been placed at the upper level. So such combination is possible. So we have to be always take into account these signs involved with the direction of the line of sight and the placement of the equipment at lower level or upper level. This will be more clear as we consider this particular example. Now here as you see equipment is placed at the center. We have taken the reading at station A as 2.4 meter. We have taken the reading at station B as 1.4 meter. Hence, the true difference in elevation should be 2.4 minus 1.4 that is 1 meter. Here again, we have maintained the same relationship. We have assumed that position A is placed at the lower level, line of sight is inclined in the upward manner. As you see in this particular second setup, equipment is placed at 10 meter in line of AB from this particular station A. As such, we have read the reading on station A with this particular instrument setup as 2.5 meter and we have taken the reading at station P as 1.4 meter. The difference works out to be 1.1 meter. This 1.1 meter and the true difference in elevation 1 meter does not tally. That means here we have to adjust. Now, the same relationship that we discussed on the earlier slide can be followed here. This error E is H minus H dash. It comes to be minus 0.1 meter. So here the assumption that we have made that the line of sight inclined upward is wrong. The error is negative. Hence the line of sight should have been inclined in the downward path. This particular error E occurs over the distance D which can be used to quantify EB and EA. So here this EB is equal to E into bracket D plus D1 by D which works out to be 0.12 meter. In the similar manner EA works out to be 0 0.02 meter. Either of these particular readings can be used in order to make the line of sight horizontal. Say we'll use this 0.12 meter which is error at P in order to make the line of sight horizontal. So the correct stop reading at station B should be 1.4 plus 0.12. Please note the change in signature, the change in sign here. As we considered the line of sight inclined downward manner, we have to raise it to make it horizontal and that's why we are adding this 0.12 meter in 1.4 meter as such the two readings should be 1.52 meter. Hence, we can 
make use of this particular capstan headed screws and this particular diaphragm is moved vertically in the upward manner in order to make the line of sight horizontal and passing through this particular reading 1.52 as we do so here this correct reading at station a can also be worked out as 2.5 plus 0 0.02 which comes to be 2.52 so when the equipment reads 1.52 at station b simultaneously the line of sight at station A should also pass through 2.5. In order to check these particular computations, we can have further verification. We have already worked out this particular two difference in elevation as A minus B. We have corrected these particular readings at station A as well as B as we discussed about the second setup. So accordingly, here if both tallies, the calculations are valid. In the similar manner, here as you see, in this particular problem, the readings read are 1.65, 1.21, hence the true difference in elevation h can be worked out, it comes to be 0.44 meter. Further, the equipment is moved at station D. Here, Readings read are 1.405 and 0.935 at A and B respectively. It comes to be 0.47 meter. As 0.44 meter does not tally with this particular 0.47 meter, the equipment needs to be adjusted. Assuming this particular line of sight inclined upward manner, this E by 100, which is nothing but 0.01 A, should be equal to E A by 110 should be equal to E B by 10. Hence, this E B is 0.1 E and E A is 1.1 E. Having known the reading at A and reading at B can be worked out by making use of this relationship. Hence, the true reading at A has to be 1.405 minus 1.1 E and the true reading at B should be equal to 0.935 minus 0.1 E. As we have determine this particular true readings by making use of involved error. We can make use of the same values to determine the true difference in elevation in station A and B. As we know, in the first setup, we have determined that particular true difference in elevation as 0.44. Hence, as we work out this particular difference, it should be equal to 0.44. By making this particular computation, we can calculate the error component and it works out to be 0.03. Now, the calculation gives this particular 0.03 with the positive sign. Hence, the assumption that we have made is correct and the line of sight can be treated to be incline in the upward manner. By making use of this particular computed value, now we can determine the correct reading at station A and B. So here error component at station B is 0.1 E. It should be deducted from the observed reading being the line of sight inclined upward. So 0.935 minus 0.1 into 0 0.03, it comes to be 0 0.932. Similarly, at station A, we have taken the reading as 1.405. We have to deduct the error caused at station A. And accordingly, here that error 
E is nothing but 1.1 E, 1.1 into that point not 3, the way we have computed earlier can be made use of and hence the correct reading should be 1.372. Further, 1.372 minus 0.932 should give us the true difference in elevation the way we computed with this particular first setup which comes to be 0.44 meters. We can make use of our reciprocal leveling concept also in order to make the line of sight horizontal. Let's have the brief review of the discussion that we had or the procedure that we use in case of reciprocal leveling. Here as you see, equipment is placed at A, equipment being very close to station A, stop reading red as small a should be correct one. Whereas at station B, the reading red is V. As shown here, the line of sight is dotted as shown to be making inclination with respect to horizontal and is in upward direction. Hence, the correct reading at P should be V minus E. Having V at higher level as compared to station A, we can determine the true difference in elevation as A into bracket B minus E. Similarly, when the equipment is moved at station B, here again B1 should be the correct reading whereas A1 is erroneous reading, correct would be A1 minus E, hence the true difference in elevation would be A1 minus E minus B1. As we deduct this particular equation 1 from equation 2, error component can be quantified which is shown here A1 minus B1 minus into bracket A minus B divided by now here if it works out to be positive, line of sight would be inclined upward. If it works out to be negative, line of sight would be inclined in the downward manner. As we sum up these equations, E component will be nullified and accordingly this H can be worked out as average of apparent differences in these particular elevations. Here this H is positive means A is at lower level. If it is negative, A is at higher elevation. Hence, when the equipment is at A, the correct reading at B will be observed reading minus the error component that we have worked out here. It should also be equal to the reading A minus true difference in elevation that we have worked out. Same thing could be done when equipment is at P. Correct stop reading at A will be equal to A1 minus E and it is also equal to this V plus H. So, here this is some data pertaining to the field exercise. As we see here, reading rate at A is 1.625 and reading rate at B is 2.545. When the equipment is at B, reading rate at A is 0.725 and the reading rate at B is nothing but 1.405. We want to know whether the equipment is in adjustment. If so, what would be the correct reading at B when the instrument is at A? So, 
the way we discussed about the procedure let's assume the v is placed at the lower level and the line of sight is inclined upward by e when the instrument is at a apparent difference is 1.625 minus 2.545 it comes to be 0.92 meters when the equipment is at b 1.405 minus 0.725 will be the apparent difference which is nothing but 0.68 here as h is not equal to h dash the line of sight is not horizontal we have to make the adjustment further the way we discussed in the procedure the true difference in elevation can be worked out as delta h here which is average of the apparent difference in elevation and it is nothing but 0.8 meters so when now the instrument is at a correct reading at station b will be 2.545 minus e whereas when the instrument is at p the correct reading at a will be 0.725 minus e this difference after consideration with this particular error component should be equal to the true difference in elevation 0.8 so as we compare this particular equation e can be quantified as 0.12 meter having the result positive the assumption we have made is correct so when the equipment is at a reading read at station a is correct hence the correct reading at b will be 2.545 minus that error component 0.12 which is nothing but 2.425 meters so as we deduct the observed reading at station a from the corrected reading it should give us the true difference in elevation which is nothing but 0.8 meter hence the calculations that we have made are correct so thank you friends for your attention i hope the concepts that we have discussed are clear to you so in the coming presentation we'll discuss about the permanent adjustment of tilting level auto level as well as digital level which are used for land surveying so by till then i wish you very happy learning thank you